It's a new year, a new season, and we are underway. Really dominating fashion here today is going to win. Two, three, four for the final time. Win number one of the season, only just barely. He is going to win here at the Nazareth Speedway. Wins the Everson Electric 100K. going to be Igor Moretto's going to eke it out. Cup Series champion is Shane Lake in the number 15. Welcome to the NOF SRL. Deep in the heart of Texas, we arrive to the Texas Motor Speedway in Fort Worth, Texas, just along the Denton County line. We are here for race number 12 of season number 2 of the NOF SRL Scots National Series for this, the Fuzzies Taco Shop 342. Going to take on this mile and a half track for... 40 laps. At the end of those 40 laps, only one driver can win. Coming into this weekend, Max Anderson, after a huge swing in the points, comes in with a 25-point lead over Juan Rodriguez. And it's going to be an interesting one here at Texas to see who can hold on to the points lead, whether it be Rodriguez getting it back or if it's Quentin Moore holding on to it. Anyway... We are ready to get it started. Let's go down track side and get you your starting lineup so we can get this pace lap started. And the engines fire here at Texas. 42 going to roll off here. It's Alex Watts on the front row with a pole position alongside Phoenix winner Lewis Zankela. In row two, we find Armory Digital winner Winnie Calhoun alongside Daniel Bouchard, who's won at Michigan in the Scots National Series last year, looking for another win tonight. Row three, we find second place points man Juan Rodriguez in the 73. For Arctic Racing, second place points man alongside the 64 of Josephine O'Neill. In row four, we find Max Anderson in the 56, alongside the 42 of last week's runner-up, Aiden Macro. Rounding out the top 10, we find Keith Kent in the 83, alongside Nick Martins in the 22. And I believe we have everybody rolling here. Yes, we do. So we are all good to go racing here at Texas Motor Speedway. 40 laps here around this mile and a half track. We are so ready to get it started here under the lights in Fort Worth. This track is about 40 minutes, 40 miles from where I reside at home. And I am so looking forward to this. We've never made it out to Texas Motor Speedway before on the Trinity River Network. And we are ready to do so now. As the pace car comes down, waiting for the flag to fly, the Fuzzies Taco Shop 300 is green here at Texas Motor Speedway. Alex Watts is going to lead lap number one of the Fuzzy Taco Shop 300. They're three wide for third place. Whitlock down low on Rodriguez and Zankela. Rodriguez is going to stretch away. The three wide will move backwards with O'Neill, Bouchard, Zankela. Kent almost into the back of the 19. Mike Cook gets to the inside in that 29 there in front of Timothy Ruiz. Whitlock and Rodriguez are going to go side by side. O'Neill the 64 filing in underneath the 73 as well. Watts still up front leading ahead of Winnie Calhoun. Then it's Whitlock, O'Neill, and Daniel Bouchard right now in the fifth position. Three wide as Zankela gets to the top side of Kent and Landon Smith Jr. See Talladega winner Matt Tuck starting to move his way up down there on the inside. And that Permatex number 33. 99 Madison Tall working her way up there behind Richmond winner Jordan Lopez who's working in behind Matt Tuck there. Max Anderson slipping back on the outside. Quentin Moore points leader still on the bottom line. We'll check in up front as side by side for the lead. Thought I saw it out of the corner of the screen there. It's Winnie Calhoun on the inside of Alex Watts for the race lead. Ford on the inside. Chevy on the outside. It'll be the 00 Chevy of Alex Watts holding on to this lead for right now. 
And the pole sitter has led every single lap so far in this race. But the action is hot and heavy right now. It's about to be even more so. As everyone trying to get all sorted out behind. Last week's winner, Igor Barreto, all the way back in the 39th position on track right now. As meanwhile up front, here comes Reagan Wetlock leading a huge charge down low in that number five in front of Josephine O'Neill and Daniel Bouchard. Down the back straightaway, they'll get by the 20 of Winnie Calhoun. Roberto Crown Jr., the 27, is there on the inside of Bouchard. Those are teammates side by side. Landon Smith Jr., Keith Kent getting up there, as well as Timothy Ruiz actually slipping out of it. Lopez, Zancala, and more out of the pack. Rodriguez slipping backwards on the outside line, deeper in the field. There he is just on the outside of the 18 off Boston Jones. But up front, it is still Alex Watts leading this thing. He's got Reagan Whitlock bearing down on him, though, at 180 miles per hour. Third place, Josephine O'Neill and Roberto Crown Jr. going at it. That would have been crowned by a skosh at the line, and I believe the caution is coming out. Yes, it is. Rodriguez is in it. No. Second place points man is in it. Boston Jones looks like he's in it as well as Aiden Macro. Might have had a few cars in it right down the back straightaway and on the, on the inside there. Maybe even came back up the track. Collected some more. Ruiz down on the apron, though, in that 95. We'll see how many come down the pit road here. It might be everybody. No. Actually, yes. We might just get everybody to come down here. It's right around right around this time that the pit window would have been open. It They'll be really close to the end if we don't get another caution. So, this is going to turn into an interesting fuel mileage economy race for the rest of this if we don't have another caution. Alex Watts all the way down to stall number one. And it's going to be a four-tire stop, looks like, for everybody. As off first, Reagan Wetlock in the five ahead of Roberta Crown Jr., Josephine O'Neill, Lana Smith Jr. and Daniel Bouchard, the top five off of the pit road. And things shuffle already. And for the first time this race, somebody not named Watts will be leading a lap here, or leading laps at Texas Motor Speedway. So watching from overhead here, coming out of turn number two, Rodriguez watches up into Matt Tuck, down into Macro and Boston Jones. Tuck going to do a great job to hold on to his car there. Rodriguez gets on the inside wall there, as does Macro. Boston Jones going to just nudge the wall there in car number 18. And he will slide back and the car will right itself just as soon as it gets to turn three. Matt Tuck, though, that was not his fault. But he did a great job to keep his car from getting damaged any further than it may already be. Let's take a look at another angle. So taking a look at real time coming out of turn two. Rodriguez going to wash up into Tuck down to the macro and Jones down to the inside while they go. That was a, actually a significantly harder impact than I thought it was for Rodriguez. But uh, hopefully it doesn't affect everyone's aerodynamics too much. But uh. Anyway, the track is clear. We are good to go. So let's head to the restart here at Texas Motor Speedway. Welcome back to your live picture here at Texas Motor Speedway. Finishing up working the first caution of the race here in the Fuzzy's Taco Shop 300 for an incident with Aiden Macro and Juan Rodriguez. And looks like we had a busted header on the 83 of Keith Kent as well. So Keith Kent is going to fall out of the race in car number 83. And uh, I don't know yet who else was involved in the incident. We will know uh, in post, recording the replays for the accident, as you know you have already seen it. And you've heard me say plenty of times how we record uh, the replays in post so the game doesn't crash. So 
But uh, Reagan Whitlock is leading this thing ahead of Roberto Crown Jr., Josephine O'Neill, Landon Smith Jr., Daniel Bouchard, then DJ Reed, Quentin Moore, Justin Seidel, Max Anderson, and Joshua Harrison rounds out the top 10 here at Texas Motor Speedway. We're coming around for 29 laps to go here in the Fuzzies Taco Shop 300. It's going to be a close race on fuel to the end. We'll see how it goes. Green flag getting ready to come back out here. And it is out. We are racing again at Texas Motor Speedway. A great launch for Reagan Whitlock. Roberto Crown Jr. did not get going there. And so Josephine O'Neill didn't either. Landon Smith Jr. able to get to third immediately. DJ Reed with a big run around the 7 and the 64. Now he's going to go after the 30. Landon Smith Jr. down low. Big run off the restart by the Rockingham winner. But Alex Watts led every single lap that Reagan Whitlock has not. Whitlock, that's the first green flag lap right there that anybody except Alex Watts has not has led in this race so far. Roberto Crown Jr. trying to get around that five. DJ Reed trying to get around Crown. Coming out of turn number four, we will have 27 laps to go this time by through the quad oval. Whitlock still holding on to the lead. Nobody making a move right now for the race lead. Zydell way down low on Daniel Bouchard headed off into turn number one and somehow he's going to stick it with that number 90 down low. A bit of shuffling coming out of turn number two. They gather it back up and we are still going here as... Reagan Whitlock is still up front here at Texas Motor Speedway. While we come back just in time, Roberto Crown Jr. is going to take a look down low in that 27 for the race lead, headed off into turn number one. And Roberto Crown Jr. is going to take it away, coming out of turn number two, down the back straight away, and he will clear that five. Speaking of five, five cars on the inside and behind Roberto Crown Jr. Five cars in that train in total. Whitlock trying to get back underneath. He's got Landon Smith Jr. with him. And if Crown can't get can't hold off the 30, he's in big trouble. Whitlock back up front. O'Neill in behind the 30. Landon Smith Jr. Gonna try to force it three wide through turn three and four. Crown on the outside, O'Neill Smith, three wide, coming out of turn number four through the quad oval. Give it to Josephine O'Neill, second place there. What a move. And so she will stretch away from that group and try to chase down Reagan Whitlock in the five as they are getting tight and feisty coming out of turn number two. Still three wide, even almost pushing four wide. As now Madison Toll will stretch away from that, bringing her NS Racing teammate Casey Dean with her in that 97 Powerade Grape Chevrolet. Up front for the race lead, Josephine O'Neill on the inside of Reagan Wetlock for first. Here comes DJ Reed closing in. Max Anderson and Daniel Bouchard going to be side by side for fourth place. Give it to Max Anderson in the 56 and give the lead to Josephine O'Neill in the 64 for all-star speed team and owner Darren Arnsdorf. Max Anderson, the 56, started off the season very, very strong. He's had a good season. He has not won a race yet, though. Reed has won a race. Whitlock has not. O'Neill has not. Dean has not. Tull has won before, but not this season. Anderson has not won. But now he is up to third place as Reed trying to get around the 64 of O'Neill, and he's going to have a chance going off to turn one here. O'Neill trying to work the top side. They're side by side coming out of turn number two. Oh, Anderson able to close in big time there in car number 56. All on the top side trying to help O'Neill, but it's going to cut down low as DJ Reed moves into the first position at halfway here at Texas Motor Speedway. The field tightening back up. This almost looks like a mini Talladega. 
I wasn't expecting this kind of race, but here we've got it going on. Max Anderson's going to go to the inside of DJ Reed in the 41. They're side by side, headed off into turn number three. Reed trying to work that top side. He's got a good shot. Whitlock closing in behind of the 56 there in the five, rather. Reagan Whitlock behind the 56 of Max Anderson trying to give him help. Reed on the top side is going to stretch away from both of them. Anderson trying to stay ahead of the 64 of O'Neill, though. He doesn't want to lose too much ground. Whitlock peeking down low to the 56. Not going to get there going into turn number one. And so Max Anderson will stretch away, away from Reagan Whitlock for now. And points leader Quentin Moore all the way almost to the back. 34th place on track right now. But of course Juan Rodriguez was caught in an accident. So I don't know what the points are going to look like after this race. But meantime, up front once again, side by side. Max Anderson's going to try to take it back from DJ Reed. Three cars on the inside to push. Now one migrates to the top. The other comes to the bottom. Seidel to the top. O'Neill to the bottom. Whitlock Anderson there. And Reed along the top side. Anderson trying to take the lead away here at Texas at the line. That was Reed by a skosh. Casey Dean joining the bottom line there in car number 97. Reed stretching away from the 90 is Idell. Idell slipping backwards. The momentum on the inside, though, is going to push Anderson to the lead. Coming to 15 laps to go. And, of course, you know, we have to think about pit cycles, though, because they happened under the caution with 32 laps to go. The pit window is 28 to 32 laps here. Who will be able to make it home, if anybody? Three wide for fourth place as Braden Perez moves to the inside of Dean. Reed slips out of it. Zidell and Martins to battle with him. Lopez in behind Perez and Dean for the lead. Reagan Whitlock coming back at it in car number five. He is flying the banner high for Buck Racing, and he's going to put that Bojangles number five Ford Mustang back into the top position here if he comes around this time and Max Anderson doesn't swing by him. And it's not going to happen. Move Max Anderson back to the second position. Whitlock up front leading with 13 laps to go. Anderson closing back in on Whitlock. Perez going to stretch away from that three wide that was back there. Dean O'Neill on the outside as Jordan Lopez and Nick Martins get to the inside of them respectively. But Lopez not able to get to the inside of Dean. Martins got to the inside of O'Neill though. And coming out of turn four, those two are going to be side by side. Lopez and Dean going to be side by side now going through the quad oval. Anderson's going to try to leapfrog down to the inside on Reagan Whitlock. And Whitlock trying to make that outside line work. They're just about even coming out of turn number two. Perez closing in behind in car 50. Anderson's going to move to the front for the time being, but do not count out Braden Perez. Already taking a peek out of turn number four. He's going to be there going into turn number one side by side once again for the race lead. And Anderson trying everything he can to work that top side. It's not going to happen. That top side's dying. And Perez is going to move into the top position. Dean and Lopez down there. Good block by the 50. Lopez trying to get his second win of the season in that 0-8. Won at Richmond in that thriller. That second to last lap pass. He's trying to get another one here at Texas Motor Speedway. He rides into the corner deep down on the inside. Perez with a huge block there. And side by side for third. 
Dean and O'Neal side by side. Dean's going to hold on to it for the time being. Max Anderson settles down in the fifth position. Winnie Calhoun to sixth. Martin seventh. And I can't even begin to guess on back. Up front for the lead. Jordan Lopez for Blackout Motorsports. Trying to take the lead here at Texas Motor Speedway. And Jordan Lopez to the lead of the Fuzzies Taco Shop 300 with eight laps to go. Perez Dean side by side for second. O'Neill and Anderson for fourth. Anderson the inside lanes going away. Perez able to work the top. O'Neill able to work the top. O'Neill's going to hold off that 56. Perez not going to get back up in front of Dean, or is he? Yes, he will. But now seven laps to go this time. Can they chase down Jordan Lopez in the 08? Or will we see a late race pit cycle here? It's just over 0.4 seconds, the gap between Jordan Lopez and Braden Perez. Perez starting to close in once again, though. Dean and Anderson going to go at it for the third position coming through the quad oval here. Dale Lightning in the car 77 right there, the Cottonelle Ford ready to pounce. Anderson down low on the 97. And Dean's going to make the outside line work. But Anderson's going to keep his foot in it and still go after third place there for the lead. Braden Perez in car 50 on the inside of Jordan Lopez. They're still side by side at a turn number four. Five laps to go at Texas Motor Speedway. Braden Perez going to have the low line going into one. But the top side has been good over here late in this race. They're dead even off of turn number two. But now the advantage to Jordan Lopez just by a little bit. On the inside, headed for turn three, Perez. Will draw back even with him coming out of turn four. Lopez is going to have the lead at the line with four laps to go. Anderson looking to join the party behind. O'Neal and Dean still side by side. Lopez... Trying to clear the 50. Not quite. Yes, he will. And Anderson's going to take a look down low in car 56. But will these guys be able to make it home on fuel? That oddly timed caution to put these guys in an awkward situation when it comes to fuel to make it to the end of this race. Who will be able to make it home and who will not? Lopez trying to hold on for win number two. Anderson looking for his first. O'Neill looking for her first. Lightning looking for his first in Scott's. Perez slipping backwards is going to be another heartbreaker in 2021 for Braden Perez on the Trinity River Network. Such a strong run tonight, but sliding back late. He might get out of here with a top five, though. Anderson and O'Neill going to go side by side. Anderson's going to hold on for now. But Jordan Lopez likes what he's seeing out his mirror. He's got one lap to go with the Fuzzies Taco Shop 300. While they're going at it, he's pulled away to a half second lead. Anderson is only going to be able to get so close as Dale Lightning moves into the third position. Half a lap to go at Texas Motor Speedway. What a thriller it has been. And it's going to be Jordan Lopez coming around. What a performance late in this race. His second win of the season in the Scots National Series. Jordan Lopez wins the Fuzzies Taco Shop 300. Who needs PJ1 when you can have 24 degree banking? Holy smokes, what a race. Only the one caution at the start of the race. Didn't know if anyone was going to have to come down at all. Nobody had to. Jordan Lopez out of nowhere comes through and is victorious at Texas. 
He wins ahead of Max Anderson, Dale Lightning, Josephine O'Neill, Nick Martins, Braden Perez, Casey Dean, Alex Watts, Timothy Ruiz, and Justin Zidell round out of the top 10 here at Texas Motor Speedway. We'll scroll through the rest of your standings here. Logan Alexander, the only one not finishing on the lead lap. Keith Kent out of the race early with a busted header on that Toyota. So that's going to wrap it up here at Texas Motor Speedway. Congratulations to Jordan Lopez on his second win of the season. The first repeat winner of season two of the Scots National Series. And, and putting himself in a good position to move up in the point standings here. With Juan Rodriguez having had troubles and Quentin Moore in the 88. Don't know if he was able to recover from his early uh no he was not 32nd on track that's his finishing position for the points leader so jordan lopez gonna be able to close in big time and he continues to fly the banner high for blackout motorsports he is going to be a formidable opponent later on this season when it comes to be championship time but uh, congratulations, Jordan Lopez. You're a winner again on the Trinity River Network. We'll take a look at your driver's point standings, your owner's point standings, and wrap it up here at the Texas Motor Speedway. Until the next race, y'all have a good night. SRL.